Dana White, it's the first fight week of 2020. It's the first fight week of a decade. But it's not just any fight week. It's a Conor McGregor fight week. How excited are we feeling for this one? Yeah, obviously Conor always brings a level of excitement and uh, and uh, what's going to happen type feeling uh, the week of a fight. So, yeah, it's, it's good to have him back. When you say having back, I mean, I'm sure you've heard all the things coming out of the camp. He's looks better than ever. His head's back. He's saying he's focused. For you, pers- doctor, the UFC doctor, Dr. Davidson, saw him and did a physical on him and said he thinks he's in the best shape he's ever been in. So, so for you personally, knowing what he can do for this sport when he's at his best, how exciting is it for you to think he could finally be back to what we know he can be? Yeah, I mean, anytime any of the big stars are, are, are coming back to fight, it, it, it's, it's exciting. You know, I, I, I love this sport. I love the energy of fight week and I love fight night. So uh, to have Connor back is, is, uh, is fun. I think leading into this fight and while Connor was away for a year, there was a narrative growing that maybe his star power was starting to decline and his influence in the sport was, was shrinking a little bit. I know from our numbers, that's not exactly the case. Uh-huh. For you, can you give us an insight? How, how is UFC 246 looking in yeah. terms of scale? So when you talk about the people who have insight into the business and say these things, they're all full of shit. None of them know what they're talking about and literally none of them know anything about this business. None of them, not one of them, know anything about this business. Um, We knew what the Connor fight would do. Obviously, we're the ones that set the price for tickets and and all, all the things that go along with the business. And Connor's coming in here and pulling, you know, uh, a $10.6 million gate, the, the, the fight's off the charts. It's, it's already, and as far as ESPN and, and, and what's going on there with pay-per-view and everything else, everything is, is as usual. Connor did an interview uh, aired earlier today with ESPN where he said he estimates he might be getting $80 million for this fight. Not a bad rebuttal to those who say that boxers get paid, less than, uh, get paid more than MMA fighters. Yeah. Uh, listen, Connor is... Uh, is a massive superstar in this sport, and uh, it's it, it, he's he's a he's a phenomenon. I mean, it, the kid's been making big money since the day he stepped in. You know, he, he from day one when he fought, he started to go like this, and um, yeah, nothing's changed. So, what, obviously, he needs a win on Saturday. It's, it's 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 a it's a big deal for him to get back here and, and win this fight. And uh, what he's been obsessed with since his last fight is the rematch with Habib. So um, Saturday's a, a big step in that direction. Is that the fight you would like to make next if he wins on Saturday? Well, to be honest with you, Connor believes that Habib versus Tony's not going to happen. Right. He believes that that fight will not happen. So he wanted this fight at 170 pounds so he could get back in there, shake off some ring rust, get a win and turn right back around and, and, and fight Habib when Tony falls out, is what he believes. Is there a chance then that you could book Connor on that card, maybe against Justin Gaethje, in case something does happen to the main event, you don't have to just call him up, he could already be in preparation? <laughs> Let's see what happens on Saturday first. <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking of Saturday... And every, a lot of people have disrespected Cowboy you Cerrone. You took a question out of my mouth. I was about to say, how many people are overlooking Cowboy? I'm not one of those guys. So listen, Cowboy Cerrone is one of the best ever. Um, holds a ton of records in this sport and loves to be the underdog. So uh, it's, this is a very, a lot of people wrote Cowboy off that, you know, Connor's coming back and getting a layup. This isn't a layup at all. Connor's in great shape. Connor's ready for this fight and uh, he needs to be. Also, for Cerrone, this is probably the big one, right? This is, you know, if he wins this, he's up there in title contention, you know, and this is the fight that's always been spoken about for years. For people to underestimate Cerrone, they're really looking past a veteran in this. And, and Cowboy's a top five fighter in the world. Don't ever underestimate a top five fighter in the world. It's very, very hard to get into the top five in the UFC. And uh, Cerrone's been around for a long time. He's fought everybody. He's been in big fights. Um, and he's got more fights at 170 than Conor McGregor does. So this isn't a layup for Conor. This isn't an easy fight. This isn't a, uh, you know, oh, welcome back, Connor. Here's, a, here's some easy money and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, 
an open door to Khabib. It's, that's not the case. It's going to be a tough fight on Saturday. Connor has obviously spoken about the Khabib rematch, and he wants that, and he's adamant that's going to take place. But he's also started flirting with the idea that actually he's quite comfortable at 170. Obviously, Masvidal and him have been linked, but he's now talking and he wouldn't mind to go at Kamaru Usman. Is that a fight you could potentially see in the future? Well, I, I think it's pretty uh, common knowledge that Connor and I don't see eye to eye on his, his you know, going to 170. Um, I think that Connor belongs at 155, and that's where he should stay and focus. You know, going after guys like Masvidal and Usman and, and fights like that, um, I don't agree with, but that's what makes Connor McGregor Connor McGregor. That's why people love him. And, uh, you know, even the haters who, who, who dislike Connor McGregor can't deny the fact that this kid comes out and fights everybody. What sort of energy do you think Connor's going to have this week at the press conference? Him and Cerrone have actually shown a little bit of respect in the build-up. Connor said he likes Cerrone for the, being a family guy with his grandmother and his son. Do you think, especially in contrast to the Khabib fight, which was, I think we can all agree, pretty nuts with the rivalry they had, do you think Connor's going to be a bit more chill and are you expecting almost like a friendly atmosphere going into Saturday? It's going to be interesting. I don't know. I think that, you know, trash talking isn't Cowboy Cerrone's thing. It's not really what he does. Um, and it depends on how fired up Connor gets is going to determine the weigh-ins and, you know, leading into Saturday. We'll see how that goes. If Connor comes out of this fight looking really impressive, looking like the Connor of old, is it great to have that guy back? Because the options there, I know you said you disagree with him about 170, but the options for him are, you know, he could go to Khabib, he could fight Gaethje, he could fight Maz. Is it exciting to have a huge start with so many paths you can just sort of pick one and it's guaranteed to be a success? Yeah. Listen, there's tons of guys out there to fight Connor. Everybody wants to fight Connor. Um, again, it's all going to determine on, be determined by what happens on Saturday. But it's, it's fun to have him back, right? <coughs> Oh, of course. I mean, that's a no-brainer. It's always fun to have Connor back. I'm going to just finish up with a few sort of, every time you do an interview these days, everyone tries to just grab general information from you, so feel free to break as much news as you want here. Um, <laughs> Zufa Boxing, this thing's been going on for a while now. I know you wanted to sort of announce stuff in October last year, and you're facing troubles. What exactly is the issues you're coming up against, and how soon do you think you're going to be able to overcome those? Um... I can't really get into the, the, the troubles that, that I'm having. And, and, and it's not like, um, it's not anything that I didn't expect or see coming. Um, you know, it's just taken longer than I, than I expected to, to deal with this stuff. And I'm not jumping in head first. I'm, I'm taking my time with this. Never did I come out and say, oh, I'm the guy to fix this and I'll have this turned around in no time. It's going to be a, an eight to ten year play. Um, I believe that I have set everything up the right way. I believe that I have the right people in place. I believe that I have the, um, the backing of most of the guys that are involved in boxing. Uh, so this is going to play out. Over the next, uh, you know, over the next couple of years, and I truly do believe that 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 we will be a massive player in boxing in the next couple of years. Where does Floyd Mayweather fit into that plan? Obviously, um, you know, Floyd is is, a, is still a huge name, a huge draw, and um, you know, uh, one of the one of the biggest guys in all of boxing right now, and. I think that I can add value to him, and he believes that he can add value to what I want to do. So, you know, we pretty much that day at the basketball game agreed that we should be doing business together. So, um, we'll probably start talking this summer. Does that, does, done. when you say do business together, is that him competing in boxing again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there's a lot of different things that we could do together. But yeah, that's definitely one of them, you know? And, uh, you know, he, he, I think he still believes he's a big draw, and I do too. He is, so, I think. And we think that together, which we already proved, we could blow it out of the water. And, and, and we'll try to do that again this year. Any interest in running that one back? Not right now, no. No. The Connor fight? Yeah. Yeah, no. 
do you, would you is that something that maybe if Connor committed himself to MMA for a little bit you could then sort of think well maybe we could roll that back with him and Floyd because I think the interest is still there certainly if Connor looks good I don't know that's not even yeah, yeah, that's not even what I'm thinking right now so going on to another boxer who's had some flirtations with MMA Tyson Fury who's going to be in attendance on Saturday yeah um any more progress on his interest in MMA yeah I'm uh I like Tyson and uh you know, my, my thing was he's, he, he's the top one or two guys in all of boxing right now. Um, you know, why even think about MMA when, you know, you're, you're number one or number two in the world in boxing right now. But if that's what he wants to do, let's far be it from me to be the guy to say no. So if he wants to come over here and play around, we'll see what happens. Do you book him against a guy who sort of almost favors his style or do you just throw him in there with Stipe or DC if they fight for a third time and just go hey have fun I don't know I mean I'd have to see I'd have to, it would have to come to fruition right. for me to realize at that point in time what would I do and who would I do it with um, and obviously if, if, if the number one or two guy in the world in boxing wants to dabble in MMA we're the people to do it with so um We'll see. When that time comes, we'll see what the landscape looks like and what he wants to do. I mentioned that Daniel Cormier and C.P. Miocic. Is there uh, any further progress on their third fight? Yeah, we're just waiting on Stipe. As soon as Stipe is healthy and cleared by a doctor, we'll book that fight. Uh, yesterday, Darren Till took to his Instagram looking at temperatures in Las Vegas in March. Is he fighting in March? What did he say? He, he went on his Instagram posting temperatures of Vegas in March, and he's going, oh, oh really? Vegas. Have we uh, got an update on who he's yeah, fighting? So we've been, we've been talking to him and, and bouncing around with different, uh, different opponents, and, uh, yeah, we'll have something for him very soon. But that's the event he should be coming back on in Vegas? It'll either be London or, or Vegas, yeah. Would that be against Jack Comanson? Probably not. Oh, Fill in the blank. Who is it? Probably going to not. Be? We'll see. We'll see how. Uh, uh, we'll see how this thing plays out. Would it be a top, top yeah, two yeah, yeah. middleweight? One of the top guys. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Israel Adesanya versus Yoel Romero. Israel says it's done. Is it done? Are we getting that as the headlining act? In? Yeah. That's listen. Israel has accomplished a lot of incredible things since he's been here, and uh, you know how I am with guys like that. I respect the fact that Israel wants to fight Yoel Romero. Nobody wants to fight Yoel Romero. The fact that he wants it and he feels like his legacy wouldn't be complete without a win over Yoel Romero, I love that type of stuff, man. So, yeah, we'll get it done. Cool. And finally, I think, last one for me, we're in a, a, a time in the sport where we've seen it grow to a level, think that's it, then it grows to another level, think yeah. that's it, and the ESPN deal, I think, has risen all ships. When you look at 2020, you've already got fights lined up. You're like, that's going to be a banger. That's going to be a banger. Right. At the end of this year, how, 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 how do you see 2020 going as a year in itself? So after the sale, right, 2016, the amount of negativity and stupidity um, that was out there after the sale was, was mind-blowing. And, uh, you know, again... We stuck it right up everybody's ass. And uh, 2019 was the biggest year in the history of the company, in the history of the sport. And 2020 is going to be the same. The stuff that we're working on for 20 and the next five or six years is, is so next level. And, and it's, it's like... It's hard for me because when people who think they're in the know and think they know this business try to talk about this business and, and, and what's going on and what's next, or it, it's just they're so far off base and they honestly have no idea where this is really going and how big it really is. Um, it, it's what's still super exciting for me. Um, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you. So. I mean, we're so much bigger than, than, a, than just a fight company. We're, we're a global media company now. And um, 
I'm really looking forward to some of these new markets that we're going into. And obviously, one of the big things for us now is technology. This sport has always been so aligned with where technology was going. And it's really, everything that I was saying 15 years ago is all coming together right now. There's never been a more exciting time for the sport than right here, right now. Not to mention the fact that the amount of talent that's coming up now. And with the Contender Series that, that we built a few years ago, it's, it's, just, it's all on point right now. It's all literally just going straight like this. It's, it's been fun. Exciting times to be a fight fan. And a fight promoter. <laughs> there you go. Dana White. Thank, Thank you very you. much, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.